All right, we are going to look at skeletons. And so this happens to be the skeleton of a tree shrew. So it's very small, put my hands in there for scale. And I liked it because, well, since it's small, uh, I can talk about it right here at my desktop and we can go through all the parts. Now, obviously different mammals are gonna have different sizes and the size of their skeleton is gonna be in comparison. But all the parts are the same and the way the muscles attach and the shapes of the bone, relatively similar. So let's go through and make sure we know what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna have a different uh, video on the skull to do the different bones of the skull. Uh, most skeletons, the skull is removable so that you can really get a good look at the skull. And you can look at the teeth and you can look at the bones, but I'm actually going to use a larger skull for a video. For now, we can say, okay, that is the skull. I'm gonna take it off so I don't crush it. Ah, uh, he's headless. All right, but these first vertebrae here, kind of from my finger to the probe, those are the cervical vertebrae. After the cervical vertebrae, vertebrae that are attached to ribs, here and here, these are the thoracic vertebrae, and they go right about to here. Then we have the lumbar vertebrae. Okay. From the lumbar vertebrae, we have the sacrum, which is right here. You're like, ooh, I can't see that. All right, all right. I'll zoom this in just a little bit. Focus. The sacrum, right here, is a fusion of typically three vertebrae that are found between the pelvic bones. Sacrum. All the vertebrae after that, if the animal has a tail, many do, uh, those are all called the um, coxae, okay? The coxal vertebrae, the tail vertebrae. Uh, even humans have a few coxal vertebrae. Okay, so now let's look at a limb. I'm going to have to zoom out and refocus. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful. So nice looking at a small skeleton that I can magnify. All right, so if I'm looking at a cat or a shrew, it's the same. This bone right here, that's the scapula. And then we have the humerus. Then we have the radius and the ulna. I like the ulna, it's easy to tell because that's actually the bone of your elbow. So flex your arm back and forth and how your elbow disappears. Well, it's actually this, what's called the olecranon process of the ulna that hides into a little divot there of your humerus. But that always allows me to easily identify the ulna, it goes all the way down here. And then that other bone there, of course, is the radius. So no matter which leg I'm looking at it, which animal I'm looking at, I can tell the ulna from the radius. The radial head is round, so sometimes I think of radial like a tire, but the ulna is so distinguished that if I'm looking at an articulated skeleton, which is the only kind that you'll be tested off of, uh, it's easy to tell the difference. Okay, now as I go into the bones of the hand, okay, we have the bones of the wrist, are called the metacarpals, excuse me, carpals. Metacarpals are these long bones like the meat of your hand and phalanges. Okay, so radius and ulna. Carpals, there's lots of them, well, like eight. Metacarpals and phalanges with the tips of the nails. If we compare that to well, your own hand, right? So my hand, the carpals are the bones of my wrist. The metacarpals are the bones of my hand itself. And then the phalanges are gonna be the fingers and thumb. Okay, so those are the phalanges. Carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. All right, so now let's do back leg. Here we go, back leg. So that we can see the coxal bone Okay, the hip bone. And this is made up of the ilium, okay, the ischium, and the pubis, where the pubis is where the two bones come together. So this is one solid bone, the coxal bone, and it has three bones that are fused, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Okay, that connects to the femur, there is a small kneecap, 
that's the patella. Then we have the tibia and the fibula. Look how tiny and skinny that fibula is. If you've ever gotten shin splints running, that's where the uh, connective tissue between those two bones becomes inflamed. It's very painful. And you have to kind of wait a little bit to kind of get those shin splints to go away, but that's what's going on there. Let's go tibia and fibula. And then the foot is very similar to the hand, except instead of carpals, they're called tarsals. So we have tarsal bones, those are the bones of the ankle. Metatarsal, the long bones in the meat of your foot. And then again, phalanges would be your toes. Okay. Those are all the bones of the skeleton found on this very cute little tree shrew.